Welcome to the Patricia Rose Volume 4 videos on how to make polymer clay and this is going to be a baby tape. These particular photos were photographed by a friend of mine from South Africa. So these babies, and they, oh, we got a glamour shot there. These babies are actually uh, little residents of South Africa. So uh, there's no copyright on them if you want to use them for whatever purpose. Um, um, I've included them with this tape. You can freeze frame them and you can uh, study them. They've got all kinds of detail that you don't normally find and photos like this are hard to come by. So close up to the feet, close up to the sweet little faces. Uh, look at those. Isn't that, isn't that adorable? So anything you want to do with them but I put them in there for reference material this one's flying <laughs> he's too cute uh, different angles um, of the legs the little bottom this one I use a lot um, in measurements you can measure them off to find out exactly how they're supposed to be so let's get started The baby that I've chosen to do is this particular model right here. This is the actual pose that I'm going to be doing. Um, this baby is probably about six months old or so. But I have diagrams to show you proportioning of a baby um, and all the little nuances that go to one. Um, right here, these two big pictures. And we have broken it down um, to head size and how many heads per length of body and so on so that we can show you exactly how a baby is put together um, so here we go all right um, first off the doll that I'm going to be doing is approximately five inches long when it's completely finished it's a small doll this is a for um, fantasy um, polymer clay um, sculpting classes here so we are actually going to keep it small we could do a larger one but we wouldn't be able to finish it in the time allowance that we have for this particular film so what we've got right here is um, the head measurement from the top of the head to the back of the head well or from the face from the top of the head down to where the chin is either one if you go across um, they are approximately an inch on my doll uh, so if you've got an inch measurement and pretend this is an inch and you go down one more inch it puts it to the waist and one more inch it's going to put you to the little bottom part um, the whole thing is broken up into head sizes just like you would for a large um, mermaid or a fairy doll or anything that you sculpted that was humanoid it's broken down to head sizes like eight heads per um, for a male or female seven and a half heads um, but for a baby the baby's heads are huge so it's going to be um, most of the body um, like one head two heads three heads here on this top of the thigh down to the knee that is a head length from the knee down to about the ankle or just a little bit below that's another head length so um, and if you extended the arm all the way from where it the armpit is out to the wrist it's approximately a head length too so this helps a lot so that's how we're going to start the thing um, I'm going to make an armature next and uh, then I'm going to start adding the clay Okay, for this part we're actually going to make an armature that is going to be perfect for our little 5 inch doll. We're going to keep these things small, so I want to use a smaller gauge wire than I normally use for like a mermaid that's like above 6 to 7 inches. Um, I'm using 22 gauge uh, wire and I'm actually cutting it a double length. It has a loop at the top, like so, that is going to be 6 inches on each side. So. And that's the first thing we do. Then we're going to take the wire, loop it around the top. The loop is for when you put it in the oven, when you fire this piece of polymer clay, you're actually going to have this little loop sticking out of the top of the doll's head. I'm going to make this down to approximately, just keep twisting it till you get it down to about where the heart would be. So I'm going to say it's right there 
and I will have with this particular video the actual um, armature guide and the outline of the baby so that you can just put the clay on it, line it up, the armature and the body of the clay and the body of the baby so that it's like paper dolls. You can actually follow it and trace around it, whatever you want to do. And here's how I do it. I just twist what would be technically the leg. This is the arm wire now. Over the top of the arm wire and under it. And I've um, locked in the arm wire by doing it that way. See? Then I take and I hold it tight here so I can put some more twist to it. And that makes what is the heart. It's not exactly heart shape, but it's close enough. Okay, and I'm going to twist a bit more. This is a very short baby. Remember, I have approximately an inch at the end. The twisting will take up some of the slack, but not all of it. So you don't want to twist it too long. Okay, just short little body. Oops, I'm going the wrong way here. Okay, that's probably enough right there. The head is going to be in this locale. The little torso is going to be in this locale. And that leaves us with little legs. So we're going to put a little hip bone in each side. And those are the legs. We're going to put a little shoulder. And baby shoulders are practically um, next to their neck. They're so tiny. So we're going to bring that in a little further in than where the hip bone is going to be. And when we actually have um, our pattern laid out here and we start applying the clay, I will actually cut off the ends of the arms and the legs where we have too much. It's always better to have too much than not enough. So make your little arms and legs a little bit longer. Uh, we actually will be selling these little armatures, finished armatures, uh, on our website and on eBay as little packages or um, you know, like five in a pack. So, and they're going to be real inexpensive. And somebody's going to sit there and wind them all up for you if you don't want to do it. But if you do, this is how you do it. You will have a pattern and you can do it yourself at home. This is the picture that I've chosen to do for this particular video. Uh, this is a baby out of a magazine. It's probably a little boy. I'm not sure whether I'm going to make it a boy or a girl at this point, but I really like it. I've had it for years, and um, <clears throat> I'm going to start off with making the X in the middle. X marks the spot, like I've always said. And um, I'm going to buzz through this. Um, just as fast as I possibly can so that you can see how I actually do a doll. And I'm going to make the lower line first, just below the middle line. Make the indents <clears throat> for the eye socket. And start gathering the clay going towards the center where the little nose is. Mark off the nose, mark off the mouth, and just push it towards the center. doesn't take very long once you know where all of the proportion is supposed to be. You want to push up on the mouth just a little. Make a little ball underneath the chin by making a divot just right under the bottom lip. Little, little places on the side, <clears throat> which makes the little cheeks look real fat right then. Feather out the area that you don't need. Make a little <clears throat> pressure. Um, indents on the side where the uh, temples would be and smooth out all the lines. You don't really need them any longer now. Looks cute from the side, starting to. Right now we have a baby. It's just that simple. It takes very little if you know where it is. Then the rest is just pecking around at it. Use the right tools to feather it out. <clears throat> yeah, this is a stylist. I use a stylist quite a bit to um, make all the little depressions and feather it out with the brushes. I'm trying to round out the little nose right now. And it's going to be ugly for a while. It's going to look like E.T. But you can see where I'm going. 
Don't make those too deep on the sides now because you'll look like an old man. It's a masculine feature, but babies do have a lot of fat, so um, it's workable at this point. We can we can use a little bit <clears throat> deeper line there, but not a hard line. It has to be smoothed out. Let's make the center line for the mouth. Tap up the mouth. Feather, feather, feather. She's looking really cute. Uh, I guess it's a she. It will be a she if I put some long eyelashes on her and some pink lips and girl hair. Makes a lot of difference when you uh, press in on the sides of the mouth and press in on the <clears throat> sides of the temple a little bit. Make the mouth poutier and the temples thinner that way. Let's put a little detail now in the um, upper lip. Um, like you're lining your lips a little bit on the nose holes so you just keep go back keep going back and change these things ever so often and at some point you're going to find the look that you're looking for and go with it so let's try making some eyes now just make the top lid actually it's a top line because there's not much of a lid on this particular photograph that I'm following and there's the pupil and I'm sure I'll change it half a dozen times before I actually finish the doll. <laughs> That's what you'll do too. Got the lower iris. Little tear duck. I'm moving as fast as I can because we've got a lot of territory to cover. You can map it off with um, the stylist, the nail tool, the um, this needle tool, there's so many things you can just, it's like sketching on the actual clay. See? It's got little eyes. <clears throat> They're kind of scary at this point, but we'll feather them. The brow line's a little heavy, so we want to feather that out. And every time you see a fade in, fade out on this, um, you're going to know that I was off camera just a little bit and trying to bring it up to snuff where I can show you a little more each time, trying to save time. Gee, it's got a fat little face. Goodness sakes. The brow's heavy. It needs to be thinned between the eyes. Babies basically have no bridge of the nose, so we're going to take some of that away. Straight across. The eyes are at a, in the last half of the, bo the face, so <clears throat> we want to make sure, once you understand that whole principle, the straight across and straight up and down, you're going to understand that it is so easy to make a baby once you know the formula. Keep practicing it. Make the eye level always lower than the half mark. And I just keep going back and touching up here and there to try to refine it until I'm happy with it. Ah, here we go. I've done a little bit more off camera right now, so it's looking a little bit better. And I've feathered, and I've done most of this, the improvement that you see with the little brush that's in my hand right now. It's real thin. There's hardly any upper lid right across there, but there's a little light eye line indication, or eyelid indication. <clears throat> which I just pointed out, so thin it at the temples pull it back towards the back of the head, don't worry about what the back of the head looks like it's not going to matter we're going to try to keep this doll approximately a one inch length in her head, but it might be just a smidge over and so don't stress yourself over this just keep pecking at it Round up the lips, round up the chin. There's a chin ball there, and a chin ball on a little nose ball, little round nose. And you accentuate all you can around the nose and around the eyes with this feather brush. Yeah, push this up right there. Push it down and away towards the cheek area, towards the center of the nose. Just accentuate a little bit more. So what do you think? We got a baby? It's kind of cute. 
<clears throat> I kind of like her. I think we'll keep her. We just saw how this little face was made. I went off camera for a little bit and I finished it up. I always like to finish the face before I do the body completely because a lot of times um, you'll, you'll start out with the size and somehow or another the face just doesn't line up with the body. So if you have a size in mind that's good. You can have your armatures ready and just try to hold the face to approximately one inch. Which is, that's what that baby is just about here. So um, this is the finished baby and I don't want to do much more to it other than put um, a hole in the top of the head and ears on it. So what we're going to do now that the baby's finished and you don't want to sculpt on it more than you have to. You don't need that much neck obviously. Okay, So you're going to put your little loopy end up there and try to get it to come out pretty much in the top of the head. Not always does it, see? <laughs> but that's okay. It's tricky, but you got to make sure it comes out to the top of the head <clears throat> there by rearranging it. Okay, the baby's head is on the body. Okay, now our next step is just add a lot of clay to it. Remember what I said about proportioning now. The baby's going to be approximately um, two inches from the neck down to the little crotch area. So I just get it on there any way I can. Sometimes what I do is, especially if you have a thicker baby body or a thicker any kind of body, you know, a little fairy or whatever, um, I use up my dirty clay and you will have a uh, real quantity of dirty clay over the course of this um, polymer clay doll making hobby that you have or whatever. So we just get it soft enough. Dirty clay on the inside and that way we cover up the wire as fast as possible and we actually want to um, wrap it around like a snake if you can. You can roll it out. I don't know if I could roll it out. There we go, like a snake. Remember all that clay making when you were a little in kindergarten? Well, here's where it comes in handy, all that snake training that you did. <laughs> we want to cover up the wire. And remember what I said on the proportioning that uh, from the baby's armpit out to where it would be the wrist of the doll um, is, is about an inch, about the length of the actual baby's uh, head, the length of the arm is. So I'm just going to put that much on it for now and I'm going to go and try to cover up the wire as fast as possible and then I'm going to go wash my hands and I'm going to put the real good clay on so it's really clean. So you can roll this out any way you get it on there but try not to touch the face because that's finished and we don't want to have to clean it up. And this is a fat little child, so you know if they've got a fat little worm putting it on here, that's fine too. Mm. And I think we're about there. And there's going to be a pattern included with this video that you can hold the little doll up to, just like I did. If you've got my uh, ver my mermaid video and my fairy videos, previous videos, um, we always included a pattern. It was kind of rough, but hey, um, it was all you needed really to get it going. And wrap it around. And so it'll show on the pattern how fat you need to make the baby from the side, um, how wide from the hips, and where the actual hip joint will start and where the knee is going to be so um, and you'll be able to buy these armatures or make one just like this with the instructions that come with it because the pattern will have a little layout where the armature lays right down on top of it so and the baby is virtually has no neck I don't know if you've ever noticed that but they have no neck we're going to put it up there pretty high. 
we're just going to keep adding to it. It's going to take a little while. And since I know you guys know how to do this already, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. I'm going to spend time on the actual detailing. Okay, let me quit at this point and just do some legs. Do some snake on the legs. And remember what I said on the proportioning thing, that we are going to measure from the hip part, even though there's a head measurement here and a head measurement here, we're going to start our hip um, to knee measurement a little further up like so and come up with a one inch head measurement and then the rest is going to be down to the ankle. So we're going to put some clay on the wire just to get the wire covered up and our hands cleaned up before we start the really good stuff. And yes He's been riding a horse for oh too long. <laughs> so when you're in your patterns in front of you, when you get to this stage, you actually hold it up to your pattern and make sure that your pattern is under a piece of glass like what I have right here because if you don't, you're going to pick up the print off your pattern. So that's why I use this. And this is probably going to be too long. So once you've, you've got it under there and you get to this stage, you want to hold your little doll down like this on your pattern and you're going to see where the arms and the legs are actually going to be. And right now, right then, you cut off the excess wire. We don't want wire in the hands or in the toes. You can put wire somewhat in the feet, but um, it's generally they're going to cause you a problem too. I generally make it down to the ankles or to the wrists, and that's it. So uh, I'm going to go off camera after I build this up a while, and now I'm going to wash my hands and bring out the clean clay. And I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to put out put some really good clay on it, like so, and keep building it up. So. That's it for this little section. Um, been off camera a little bit and I need to show you um, some of the steps I've been working on and so you don't miss out on anything. Um, right now I'm just building the torso and I've got um, a little dip right here where the shoulder blade goes. See there's like no neck at this point. I'll refine it later. But um, there's a dip in the center. A little little bitty booby right there and there's a dip on the side it's, it's a fat little baby it's not real thin so you're gonna have some little fat folds even right up in here a dip right there a dip right there where the muscle attaches to that side over there comes down it's got a little roundness to it here dip right here I'm working my way into what would be the hand later but Let's pretend that's a hand right now. <laughs> okay, um, we're, we're <clears throat> working on the little belly. Um, belly button's going to be somewhere in that locale. It's thinned right here on the sides. It's more bulby, bulbous right in this section right here. The actual um, leg uh, attachment is right up here. It starts pretty high. And I'm starting to build leg right here. I haven't got very much of it on there yet, but um, I'm going to put a little bit on the other side. See how high up it goes. And see the profile of the little belly starting? But I've got tons more to build right in this area right here. So, um, and then it comes down to a, a Y. I'm not going to be real specific about the little situation down there, so I'm just going to pet it. But if you'll if you'll uh, pay attention to things like the little butt does hang down lower than the little genitals, okay? So, and that's about it for now. Just remember to thin it up right here and round it up here. There's a little pelvic mound right here, girl or boy. It's going to protrude some, and this is going to dip in here. So, and this is where the dighty goes on this side. <laughs> okay. 
All right, we're going to put a little bottom on it. Um, if you'll notice the photo behind me, it has, let's bring it in a little further, has a, a little dip right in here and a little heart shaped behind. So we're going to make this line, this line, this line, and this dip right there, and the backbone. So I'm going to bring it a little closer to the camera. Start with the backbone. And it's not real deep. Um, not on this baby, it's not. I've seen some deep ones, but they're fat little babies. This is an average size baby. Okay, we're going to take and the flat side of your blade, line it up with this line. Go ahead and make that first. And it's not as high up as you think it is. It's, it's pretty far down there. Okay, and then with your thumb, make a depression across the top. Okay, a little deep, deeper right in here. A lot of feathering in to do. It's a tiny little bottom. This is the rough, roughing in of it. We've got a long way to go. There's quite a bit of space between the two. And then I've got to build up the legs yet, but they start there's a dip right in this section on the torso and it starts building up quite a bit of um, thigh there yet. So that's the start of the bottom. That's how you get the depressions and how you make it rounded. So, okay. Uh, I'm going to show a few little fat folds. I um, haven't detailed this one leg. Uh, started getting this in shape so I can just ex explain where the little fat folds are and cute word for that isn't it because that's exactly what they are all right um, let's go do the arm we've got a little fat fold up right here I hope you're catching that all the <clears throat> um, body folds this is a fat fold this is a body fold all the body folds go out away from the actual torso. That would be the front and the back. They're curved out that direction. All right. Okay. Uh, there's a little fat fold right here. You're going to have just a little further down on the arm. You're actually going to make an indentation where the elbow, or the bend of the arm would be like so. And I'll take you to the other side of the arm, the other arm. Okay, I can make a nicer one here. This is this is about the right thickness. This the other side wasn't quite thick enough yet. I'm still building. I got a little fat fold here, a little dip here, a dip here. It's got a raise right here where there's a muscle and a bone underneath of it. So it's up a bit. You can see that. And it comes out to what would be, I haven't started a hand yet, but we're going to have a line all the way around where there's a fat fold. And a hand there. And on the back side, I'm going to turn it around. Um, it's going to have a little bend in it, not much of one. The, the pose that I've chosen, um, the arms are kind of straight down. I'm making this as uncomplicated as I can for the beginners in the bunch. Um, and then the most you're going to have as far as an elbow on this side, you're going to have a little dent on each side. And just a tiny bit of an indication of a elbow underneath. It's got a little bit of a dent above it and below it. See right there? Just a mound, a mound and a dip here and, and a dent on each side of the mounds. Okay, that would be an elbow. Okay, on the back side of the leg, since we're going down this side, that's pretty much on its way. Um, if you look at the photo, you've got 
a number of, of fat folds. Okay, here's the first one where the little butt is. We made this earlier, but I've been playing with it, so I kind of lost it. And this is what happens. All right, one. And then we've got another one here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tool and move it from this side and then turn it upside down and move it this side. I'm over-exaggerating so that you guys know where it is to begin with. All right, there's one there. Then the actual um, leg, back side of the knee, comes all the way across, like so. Now, if it were an actual lady, you know, or a girl or something, you're not going to have this much fat here. It's real thinned out, and there's a, a continual um, line across here where it's real nice and smooth, and the dip is on each side. But the way this is, it has actual fat fold, so we're going to make that heavy there. Um, build up the calf, like so. I haven't completed it yet, you can see, but we're getting there. Back side. Trying to make something that looks like a foot. And you're going to have across the back side of the um, ankle, you're going to have a couple of fat folds there. All it is is a matter of observation. You're just going to start paying more attention to things that you've taken for granted before. If you're trying to sculpt, and I'm making them real deep now, um, when you go to feather them out, just use a brush and go over it and over it and I'll show you that later but that's the start of the fat folds and see when you bend it look it's looking more and more like a leg all the time okay uh, let me turn it around and see if there's anything on the front side yes okay let's do some continuation of the fat folds on the back side this one goes right across here and there's kind of another one in the middle just a little. It's a, it's um, right about there. And this is the back side of the knee. Let's make the front side. You're not going to see much bone anywhere on these babies and the muscles is not, the muscles not real developed either so but we'll give an indication of a knee somewhat and a little pooch right there comes down. That's a little too much for a, a newborn baby, but at least you know where they are. Okay, and we haven't got the foot on there yet, so. And the way I've got it right now is the front side of one leg is done and the back side of the other leg is done. But, okay, um, come back up here and they do have little titties if they are um, a normal healthy baby. And not some little child from a third world country where they're going to be flat and have well we do have a large belly here though <laughs> and just remember here's where it dips in on the sides both sides and that's where it starts so you're going to end up with two heads for the torso start there one head length for that and for the rest of it one head length so um, this is going to be about a five now it's, it's growing on me, five and a half inch baby, I think. But by the time we get it posed and everything else, it's going to be sitting about three inches high. So, um, let's see. And I did the shoulders. What I did was I indented right here a little bit. And the shoulders are not square. They're, they're dipped in right here on both sides. Virtually no neck, but there's a little neck ring right here. Hope you can see that. Um, and then the shoulders are brought forward. Push them forward, both of them. And they slump down just a little bit to get a natural pose on it. Okay, and remember what I said, there's a little fat right in there. A little fat fold. But you don't want to make a real sharp end of that. Okay, and we'll do the refining in just a little while. We'll be working on feet, hands, and ears shortly. So that's pretty much the basis for a good start. The rest is just follow the pattern that you have that came with the video and um, don't make any of the fat folds too deep and before you actually fire it 
we're going to take your brush and feather all those things in so they look natural and you can determine whether it's going to be a boy or a girl you won't be getting pictures from me on that situation but um, if you have children I'm sure you understand that I had a girl that's the only one I know I don't know what the other one looks like <laughs> okay that's it for this section this is a set of little baby feet and what we're going to do is we're going to make some toes. So what I generally do is study the photos first and I'm going to turn them over and I'm going to... I noticed on all the photos that I have of babies they have um, not as predominant a heel as um, adults have this because they haven't walked on them yet and they're real nice and tender. So they do not have... let's say, okay here would be a heel of an adult it sticks out kind of like this. If you can see this right here. A baby's heel, I'm going to push it down because it's pretty much flattened out. Okay, um, so I've got these two little fat folds on the back and a depression on each side to make it even smaller. Okay, doesn't leave as much detail on the bottom but there still is an instep right there along with the dirt. Oh, I swear. Anyhow, <laughs> so um, I'm going to cut it off some because the foot looks like it's too long now that I'm flattening it out. And I'm going to do some little toes. I'm just going to make the bottom depression first. And uh, there's a lot of little crisscrossy lines and things. Um, if you've seen the um, pictures that we've included with this, feel free to print them out. They are mine. <coughs> Can you believe that? I can't believe she did that. <laughs> I think we should leave this in. This is cute. This is what I have to contend with on a daily basis. This is dog barking if she doesn't get her way. <laughs> if she does it again, you'll at least know what it is this next time. <laughs> She's a three pound Pomeranian with a mind of her own. Okay, so anyhow, uh, big toe. We're just indicating at this point. I have to cut through from the other side. So, like I said, if you get um, um, a chance and you want to print out all the photographs that we've included with this video, feel free because they're mine, they're pro my property. So, and I'm giving you the right to, and you can use them to um, sculpt from, or hey, I don't care. You can print them out, make postcards. Don't care. Okay, I'm going to turn her over. Okay. And I'm going to put a little foot down on the glass here. And it's going to be a little little high. The toes are going to be a little too fat. So what you do in order to um, thin them up is you just cut away. Because you know how pliable this clay is. Cut away the other way, the other direction. And it's going to make them a little longer by doing that. So we'll whack it off. Yeah, it's my two favorite words is whack and putz around. <laughs> with the clay. Let's see, let's see, we lost some of the detail. Let's go back and do the underneath side just a little bit. We have to keep doing that because every time you press down on it you're going to lose it. Uh, everybody says, oh I don't know how you work in this soft clay. Are you kidding? This is the best thing ever. You just got to learn how to handle it better. That's all there is to it. Okay, make the big toe. And it's uh, essentially it's like one-third from this point to this point make another line which be cut it all in three equal parts with the little you know the little toe on the side is going to be just virtually nothing okay and then you can do that now your nail tool whoa stick into the floor okay your nail tool is going to come in and if you just drag it down like so you can keep you know, this little part right here is a little deeper and you can keep the roundness of a little toe just by doing this. It just keeps it. it rounds it off, makes it pretty. Alright, well, let me see. We need to do a little more to the front toe. This, this has a dip right here. And we're going to round off the bottom of the toe. 
front edge of the toe, pardon me. And sometimes it's kind of hard to do, and you're going to have to press down anyhow. So I found that if you go ahead and press down early on, I think I'm getting in the light here, and I early on, you get more of a round edge. And don't leave any hard lines. That depression was just a little on the hard line. Yeah. Okay, and we're going to. I use a um, stylist to do um, the nail beds, and also I use my nail tool. But I, right now I'm just pushing in an indication. It's, I'm not doing the detail on the nail beds yet. Just getting the roundness of it. Okay. Press these down a little bit more. Now you don't want them pressed down too much because these babies have fat little toes. And I'm sure by pressing down at all, we're losing the detail on the back side again. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. Round it off. And it does take a while to get it exactly like you want it. I've got the foot a little fat, so go ahead and trim all you want to. And how you do it is just trim straight down. Oops. Just be extremely patient with this operation. Oh, you think this is bad. Oh, well, you see the hands. <laughs> And my nail polish looks totally ratty, but I wanted you to see just exactly what this clay does to the nail polish. And it just eats it off your fingers. So we're going to go back and you're going to put some fat fold in there and then a little ankle bone. I don't know if I'm getting it angled right for the camera to see, but... Uh, And after I do this one foot, I'm going to save the hands until after I've got the pose in. Because what I'm finding is um, my pose, the one I've chosen, um, it's one hand is flat against the um, uh, left leg. So that means I don't have to do the bottom of one of those hands. Isn't that wonderful? That's kind of a sloppy leg, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back off camera and I'm going to sit there for about an hour on each foot and each hand and give it the detail that it really needs. But that is essentially all the things that you have to do. Go back and get the underneath side. And the hands and feet are always a lot smaller than you think they are. Always. Put that in there. There's a lot of ways you can get the underneath side. Um, probably a stylus is the best one to make what I call um, toe stems. Little toe stems. And you can round it off. There's my dog again. We had to put the other one in the bathroom on the third floor because she's barking her brains out too. Oh my goodness. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh, there she goes. Missy, hush up. Okay, that's getting there. Just take your time with it. And we'll have a couple more photos of the feet um, dropped in this, and you'll see them in just a few minutes. So hang in there, folks. Rome wasn't built in a day. Just keep going back and forth and redefine them. Don't give up. Keep playing with them. I haven't even got to where I can detail the toenails yet. Sometimes they go real, real easy, and when you're on film, they are miserably the worst thing you could possibly do. Oh, well, that's not too bad. You can tell their toes. Okay, um, on the uh, inside 
line between the front toe, the big toe, and the first toe. You want to make your body folds go away from the body on the little toe and the big one. Um, they're really fat toes, so you want to actually um, try to keep the fatness, and you just want to take your brush. When we de get ready to do all our detailing, it will all be done with the brush. And you just want to push through them just a little bit. And I've got to work on the little ankle. You won't see much of an ankle, actually, because um, babies have so much fat on them. We are actually getting there. This is the pose I've chosen. Um, it's a six-month-old baby, and it can hold its head up really well. And so um, I've got one little hand on a leg, so I don't have to sculpt the bottom side of it. Uh, it's in a seated position, so you don't have to worry about a um, setting, and you can pose it, put it anywhere you want to, um, on a bookshelf, um, in your doll cabinet, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put her in a little pose. and. Uh, a lot of times, if you're lucky, when you pose the doll, the little fat folds will actually work with it. This is because the clay is really soft. So I'm going to put her down like this. She's got her little knee coming in at an angle. This little foot goes, oh, it's kind of weird. <laughs> but this is the way it is. Now sit her down. Her little feet. You know what? I think I might even cross her little feet. That's a cute look, because I've got the foot underneath pretty much done. And she's si sitting this way, and her little torso is turned towards you. Now, see, this is why you have to go back and smooth everything out, because it's just going to really be a big mess after you get all these fingerprints on it. So, and I'm going to put her little hand, let's see, she's a little further over this way. Let's try it more this way. You never know until you're right in the middle of it. And then your dog barks. <laughs> okay. She wants dinner. It's getting late. Okay. And then we've got a little toy that we're going to have. Here she goes. A little toy that we're going to have. And I don't know how the <laughs> Makes for an interesting tape. Um, don't know how the toy's going to be, but I think that's pretty much it. We'll put her little head more this way. So that's her pose. And it is going to be a girl. I haven't done any boy babies as yet because I don't know what I'm doing. So I think that's adorable. Let's go with that. Okay, I'm going to go back and uh, work on the hand. I started it earlier, but I didn't get a whole lot done on it because I wanted to show you that detail. Um, first, you want to make on the hand what looks like a mitten. And um, I've picked this little pose um, to match a picture that I showed you earlier. And if I don't know that you can see it or not, but I've got the thumb probably uh, in the right location, but I don't have enough. If you look right in there, I hope you can see it on the camera. Um, this little area right there, it's not thick enough. The thumb's okay. It's in the right area and it needs to be down that far, but I'm going to have to add clay in places like that. So um, then I'm going to make some fingers. So excuse my big clumsy fingers. I'm going to get it in there. Yeah, here we go. And so here's what i got to do. Patching in is difficult when it's to this point. And it takes a while to get it in there right. Well. Okay, and you want to leave um, a line all the way around for an <clears throat> indication of the little chubby wrist that she has. 
clean up the debris the best you can. Don't worry about it too much. The brush is going to pick up most of it. When you go back. Okay, and then uh, I want to bring up the, the line in the hand a little bit more. Oops, I stabbed her. Oh. Okay, and now since I've put the thumb a little higher, um, the, the joint between the, the, the hand and the thumb a little higher, um, this part is right, but now the thumb is too long. So we're going to cut it off. It's tricky when you're trying to get it up against the actual doll. But if you just take your time with any of these operations, you'll get proficient after a while. Just pull it out of there. Okay. <clears throat> and you can go and put your little tool down there, pad out the loose clay, stick it underneath the palm of the hand, which won't show, which is a blessing because this is a beginner film and this is a lot to take in. Okay, I'm going to make some fingers. Now, <clears throat> you want it to lie in a natural pose. This is not natural. It's a big hump of, hump of clay right now. So um, I'm going to cut it down. So like it's the thickness of the palm from here to here is what you're considering, you know, and how, how much it would... <clears throat> really look like in, in real life. So you can't pull too hard and too long going this way because um, the clay stretches with you. So you cut it one way, then cut it another one, just like you're cutting a tree down. A little bit that way. A little bit this way. Up to that little fat line. And um, this is really too wide. So we're going to take a little out this direction. And the fingers are too long. So I don't want to cut down too deep because it'll go into the doll's leg. So I'll just round it out the best I can and pick at it to where it just tears off. Because if you cut all the way down into the doll's leg, then you've got another repair area to deal with. Well, any day now. I think we'll leave those. <laughs> Wasting too much time on that. Okay. <clears throat> See, you just pad down around it. And since you don't have to deal with a cut, you don't have to patch it back in or anything. Um, on the underneath side, let's see, we make this a little bit deeper here. See, I'm taking away with a tool that's a detail tool, and that really doesn't work, but you're getting the drift. I'm making a little pad on the side of her hand. <clears throat> so it looks like she's pressing down on this one hand. And the brush will take care of a lot of that. I don't spend a ton of time detailing until I've got it all the way I like it because I've got this um, thing I say when I teach my seminars don't detail the leaves until you've drawn in the forest. And what that means is you're going to spend a lot of time playing around and detailing this, and then you're going to realize, oh my God, the hand's too wide, and I've got to cut the whole thing off. So don't do that. Just really think about it. And even if you end up with the whole piece where it's just like pieces, it's cuts and blocks, and it's squared off, and nothing's round about it at all, um, let that be just fine until you are sure that that's the thickness you want in that area or um, the, the length that you want something to be. See, once again, I'm just tearing this off as opposed to um, cutting all the way down into the doll's limb. And I try to keep my area around me cleaned up the best I can because these little pieces of debris do end up getting in the way and causing you trouble while down the line. <clears throat> Let's see, I, I think she's getting closer. It's, it's, I, I'm certain that it's better to um, cut it short of where you want it and this is thick and then just drag down the tissue or the clay to where you want it to be so that it 
hangs naturally over the form underneath. I seem to, that theory kind of works for me. And um, on a baby, it's going to be this little top part right here is going to be poochy, fat. And the thumb is probably still a little bit long. I'm going to shorten it this direction. Uh, it's hard to see. Camera angle is kind of tricky there. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to keep on dragging a little bit more. I'm going to leave that kind of high right through there. And what's going to happen when I do the fingers? I'm going to make them probably a little bit um, thinner than the actual pad that I've drawn that I've got right there. So <clears throat> divide it in half. The fingers are going to be opened just a tad on this, so that you can get some real definition in this. Okay. Um, I'm going to say that's, and, and here's what I do. I start with the middle and go ahead and make your other fingers, and they're going to be large. This isn't exactly the size that they're going to be, but since I want them open, spread open, I think this is the better approach. And we will just, you can cut down on this just a little bit, but don't go too deep. Remember what I said, and you get all this patching up on the inside. Okay, uh, now I don't want the fingers that thick at the ends, but up high it's not too bad because you know how it's fatter at the top and the fingers, if you look at your own fingers, they taper to the ends. Okay, so I'm just going to make little wedgies at the end there or I'm going to pull it out like that and save myself a lot of wear and tear. And it's nerve wracking, this, this hand thing is. Okay. And, uh, you know, of course, this is going to be your longer finger. And we're taping them down to the ends. That's a little too long, so I'm going to nip it off. And there we go. Here's another one. And we've got tools that can clean up all this stuff right here, so. Don't stress about it. Just get the finger in. Okay, these two are a little too long, so we need to whack them off. I cut, see what I did? I cut it down too deep. Now I'm going to go patch in it. Okay, I want this finger to be <clears throat> out just a smidge, so give it a little shove. Pull up some clay from the middle. And I've decided on this particular doll, because this is a beginner's film, to uh, not stress you out by having you put a hand, do the bottom side of a hand. Um, that's in a lot of my other films, so if you want to know how to do that, just buy another film. But if you're trying to follow this doll along exactly the way she is, um, and anytime you get a chance, you know, make it easier on yourself as far as the um, pose and everything. Just if you get a chance to hide the bottom of a hand or the bottom of a foot, do it until you're really confident and you know more about what you're doing. See what I'm doing now? I'm just rounding them out and tipping them down just a little bit at the ends. It's starting to look like a baby hand. Uh, you get back at it uh, from a distance and you try to be objective. It's really hard to tell sometimes, but um, a good measurement, um, a good rule of thumb, is to uh, hold um, a hand, your hand, let's say if you're measuring it for a human, a uh, large person or a bigger doll, measure the dolls hand 
on the face and put the palm on the chin and if the fingers come up to just above the eyebrows then that is where it's supposed to be so if I were going to take this hand off or had not done it like this right on the doll which we have to because of the, the application the way it is you know it's like stuck to the leg um, then from this point or let's say this point to this point I'm going to think it's from here to about here so uh, baby sands are really tiny and most of the time they're fist up anyhow and little tiny fists so but this baby has all the confidence in the world and it's looking right at you and it's saying so where's my dinner mom <laughs> or something like that but that, uh, the way I plan to do this one all the way down at the end of the film it's going to actually have a um, it's going to be baby fairy and it's going to have little wings on it and it's going to be um, a little tutu on it with flower petals and it's going to be real sweet now I'm going to go ahead and start putting the nails in it um, the f when I do the feathering with the brush it'll clean up all of it but and what you do around this is you want to go and get as much point of your tool underneath of that little finger so that it looks like it's resting there and not just stuck to it which at this point it's stuck because <laughs> we've been pushing on it quite a bit It went sneaky on me. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to put this, tap the fingers down. There's lots of little lines on a baby's uh, hand. So, we're, I'm going to use um, a stylist. Um, your knuckles are really close to the surface of your skin and on a baby there's so much fat that uh, the knuckles this one will be a very very light one you can have a dent as opposed to a hump and that's still too big of a stylus for this particular operation all right that'll work no well, <clears throat> still too big itty bitty bitty and um, here's the actual um, separation between the fingers. Remember when I said do like this and do like that. The little folds are going away from the body. So you're going to put your knuckle. It's not below these lines. It's not at these lines. It's pretty much on the top surface of the hand. And to really indicate them, the, the two that really only show are this and this you rarely will see that one and sometimes you'll rarely see, you'll see this one some but you don't want to have like four little dots that's not cool it's kind of tacky actually and these are not going to actually be dots when we're done with them we're going to feather everything together and let's see if I can go around the back side of this the dots have to be feathered in more so they're not so harsh almost to the point of losing them yeah. <clears throat> and on an adult these particular um, <clears throat> where the dots are, are especially these two well these three actually but these two especially are going to be higher and there's a section in between them all the, the ligaments and everything else go towards this part right here and they all go at this angle like so and there's a depression right in there so you're going to see a little bit of something going on there but not a whole lot <clears throat> and we're going to try to keep this simple because this is a beginner's film and I don't want to overwhelm everybody. I'll be making um, approximately, with any luck, <laughs> four films a year. So 
start saving your money if you really want to know how to sculpt because I'm just going to keep going through everything that I know and then I'm able to teach you. And I hope in about five years we'll have everything out and you'll know it all if you keep buying the films. So this kind of looks weak over here to me. There's, um, <clears throat> it's possibly too far in, so just take it down and push it under some, bring this in some, feather it together. And uh, anytime you have a big bulbous area like that, it's generally not true to life, so um, thin it up, push it around until it looks more realistic to you. And the longer you work with this clay, the more realism you actually will get with it. And I think that we're going to do a little something different with um, this one finger. It's kind of boring. I'm going to lift it up a little bit. Bring it out a little bit more. Shove it in. Just a little bit different. surface. I'm going to do a little bit of that to all of them actually. So dip this in just a smidge by just tapping down on it with the brush. And push this in a little bit. So you're actually going to come up with um, like a little plateau on the top. Baby's, baby's um, joint right there in the center would be um, recessed some, or just a little bit, and then it'd be puffy again right in this area. The end of that finger looks a little fat, so I'm going to nip it off just a smidge. Okay, we're getting there. It looks more like a finger, a hand. Okay, let's see what we can do with this tool. Put a few little dents in it. Now it's kind of deep, so you need to go back with the brush and and uh, fix that a little bit. Right there in the center. See what I'm doing? Makes more sense now, doesn't it? Put some kind of little nail in there. And you'll go and put, um, I'm just making an indication now to make, make, a, make a nail bed, but when you actually finish the doll, what I do to make a nail bed that is risen, um, I and this is pretty hollowed out. Uh, I paint the color that I want right in there. Um, and I'm not much on putting that white crap at the end of the, the nail. It's just, it's just a little bit um, darker the nail is uh, in color, pinker, um, than the um, finger itself. So um, this is hollowed out. Paint right in here. And then after the whole piece is fired, um, then go and put some of the, it's a varnish, it's um, Delta Chem Coat or, anyhow, it's, it's on my website. I use this matte varnish for everything. Don't, don't use gloss. Don't use gloss anywhere on this doll. It's just not natural. And unless you're trying to do some Vegas thing. Just putz around with it. See if you if you play with it for a while, you're going to end up with a hand. <laughs> and sometimes, when I'm doing it all, I'm thinking, "Oh my God, this thing is never going to come out to look like anything." And just before I'm ready to throw it against the wall, well, actually, I would never do that. But just before you're ready to almost throw it against the wall, um, then all of a sudden it just starts to take shape, and you say, "Oh, I can save it after all." So 
you know, keep trying. It's the only way you're going to get good at it is just experiment. Watch the videos and keep trying. That's more like a baby hand. I still have some you know, hard lines I need to smooth out. But I'm going to call that fair. And when you see that hand next, I'll have that smoothing out. And we will probably be actually scraping on it. Just the top surface of it. Um, you want to try to get all the detail and the fingers um, before you fire it because it's kind of hard. You might be able to scrape a little bit on the sides of it and, and even it out some, but uh, on, the so on the top surface um, it's really going to be impossible to um, clean it up and still make it realistic looking because you'll change it too much. So that's it for the hand now. Um, on the feet, baby's feet, um, I've got them kind of sloppy right now. They're still roughed in, but it's essentially the same thing as the hand. And we're going to show pictures all through this video of all the things that I did. Remember that I told you they have very little heel. Um, the um, fat fold comes out kind of um, in this area. There's a line that goes across. And you're going to have a little bit of a depth right here for... Um, a heel and your ankle bone will be considered like in this area right here, but it's it's so it's got so much fat over it that you don't even really see it. Um, babies always have their think their toes curled or their hands closed up in little fists. This baby's six months old, so um, he's getting around a little bit or she's getting around a little bit more. And but nevertheless, their their feet are all cur always curled up like so. So I've got lots more detailing and don't have a lot of film to show you these things. So uh, I've showed feet on several of my other videos, so you might want to check some of those out. And I did a little something earlier, so wasn't perfect. But the feet are basically like this, you know, like this hand is. You just get where you think that needs to be, and you just feather out the ends of it. Uh, the toes are just the opposite of fingers now. The little toe stems are thinner and the little balls of the toes are bigger. So there's going to be pictures in this and you can stop and um, freeze frame the pictures of the baby's feet up close so you'll get a better idea of what you're looking at. So um, the next time you see it, she'll be three-fourths, no, no, she'll be almost all the way done. We're down to the final stages of the doll, and this is just smoothing, and we use three little brushes to do this with. This is the tiniest, remember what I said, it stays in the face areas or between the fingers, like right here, and um, the bigger lumpy areas, we have a different brush for that, and that's an oil paint brush that is uh, coarser bristles, and it takes huge um, strokes and it's going to leave um, marks when it does it so you're going to have to go back with another brush and finish it out but this gets the big lumps this and scraping so uh, pretty soon I'm going to be scraping on this doll and approximately to do a really good job it's going to take at least two hours to scrape this thing so it's a pretty lumpy doll at this point and here's your final here's your final brush that um, gets rid of all the fingerprints and smooths out the larger areas. Stay out of the little areas with it. Cheeks are about as far as you need go into it. Um, yeah, she's got a lot of lumps on her, so it's going to take a lot of sanding. Almost all clay is going to give you this amount of lumps, and we have a considerable amount of dirt in her, too. I don't know if you can see that, but it just happens. I don't care how careful you are. If you're using metal tools, you're going to have even more. So try to use metal um, wooden tools and cover up the metal. See, um, the shaft on my paintbrushes are all taped up, trying to keep as much metal and debris away from the clay as possible. But it still happens. There's no way around it. Um, and basically all you have to, um, to do with this clay is learn how to handle it. It's always, always going to be soft. I don't care how warm you think your hands are, and that's what's causing it to look like this. Uh, lumpy and everything else and it's hard to handle. The clay itself is always going to be so pliable and so lumpy that 
um, you're just going to have a lot of cleanup at the very end. So don't think it's just you. It, look at I'm doing it too. Everybody's doing it. So, and if to look professional, you want to do a really good job of the cleanup. So next you'll see her completely finished, and we are going to move on to the paint. Um, and I'm scraping first. Um, information about the firing, and then to uh, put a costume and a wig on her. So right now this little doll is done enough in my mind to put in for the very first firing and that will be at 230 degrees for approximately in a cool oven. Start start the oven out ice cold, put the doll in, set it for 9 to 10 minutes. It takes approximately um, 5 minutes for your oven to heat up to 230. So um, then you want to cook it for about 4 or 5 minutes afterwards. Then as soon as it reaches that time open the oven door open up and let the gases out don't breathe them um, and let the doll cool down naturally till the entire piece is cold do not touch it because if you touch it it could break it is very pliable very loose and you're going to put stress on areas that you wouldn't normally um, do so just leave it alone keep your hot little hands off of it you can wait till it cools down and then you've got a better chance of having a quality doll and then start your scraping okay this is our baby after the first firing the 230 for approximately five minutes at that temperature so um, lots of lumps oh my gosh this is probably the lumpiest one I've ever done <laughs> <laughs> we had to hurry through this, so I've got a lot more scraping than I thought. You're going to see little pieces of uh, my nail polish, which I had on earlier. Little pieces of fiber off of anybody's clothing that was in the same room with me. Uh, you might even find an occasional dog hair or cat hair if you have animals. <laughs> so all you do is you put the blade, and it can be an X-Acto blade, and that's just as good. Um, you put it down at an angle and you scrape away from you like you're peeling potatoes just keep it going like this and wherever there's a white spot where you're scraping white that means that's a clean spot wherever there's a low spot and it's darker that means it's an inconsistent area from this area to this area it's a dip in it so you want to actually put scrape on it until it is the same color and one area flows from there to there. See it's still a little bit darker. I hope you can see it. If you can't, you'll know what I'm talking about when you actually go to scraping on your first piece. So I'm just going to sit here for a long time and work on my baby. Look at those lumpy thighs. Oh my goodness. Well, so we're going to do that. <laughs> Just keep working around so it's nice and smooth all the way across it and you don't see any depressions of darker flesh tones. And after we're done, I'll clean her up with a little bit of acetone, very, very little light coat just to get the white scratches off of it. And then she has to go back in the oven at 275 for about 20 minutes. If you have a convection oven, you've got it all because it keeps the consistency of the temperature circulated and you don't get hot spots and burn hands. Uh, we're not going to burn any hands on this one because the pose I chose didn't have any loose, um, little tiny delicate fingers out there to fry in the wind. Um, the only thing that could get a little darker if you've overcooked your piece are the toes. Um, and I'm actually going to have a tape later on on how to fix things that go wrong. Um, short of trying to repair one that's totally incinerated in your oven, but uh, even burnt hands can be repaired. So we'll show you that all on other tapes. To do a professional job, you really need to, after you've scraped it with your X-Acto blade, uh, and use a little acetone on it. You want to go back and clean it up some more with basically what this is uh, is wet, dry sandpaper. Uh, it's fine. I think it's a 320 grit, and you can buy it in packages anywhere Home Depot, Walmart, whatever. Um, the main purpose of this is to get the bigger areas where you have scraped 
let's turn around to the back side, scraped and you have streaks where the X-Acto blade left lines. It's hard to get them all rounded out to make it look like an even skin tone or even um, area where you don't have any streaks in it. So what you do, it builds up on the paper itself. It doesn't, and it builds up on the doll a little bit. The main thing is get it, keep it off the paper and keep the paper wet. The paper lasts a longer um, time if you keep it wet as opposed to using it as dry sandpaper. So what I'm doing is trying to get all of these areas evened out. And you can dip her in the little bath here if you want to. She likes it. <laughs> and just keep it cleaned up a little bit. And then at the end of it all, after you think you've got it pretty well sanded, just the bigger areas, don't go do the detail now. Um, hold her under the kitchen sink, get all of it off of her, and maybe use another little light tote, coat of acetone. See it build up on the sandpaper? And you just rinse it off like that. And uh, then you're ready to fire her the second time. And I have neglected to put an ear on the other side. We were in such a mad hurry, so I've got to uh, attach an ear. And at any stage you can do this. You don't have to do it all at one time. Uh, and I also cut a hole in the top of her head so that um, we can put a little plug of hair in there and feather it down so it's like a baby, baby wig. So that's it. Good luck with this situation. We're uh, starting to paint her now, and I've made her a little fairy because I do fantasy figures. And for those of you who just would like to do babies, eliminate the little pointed ears. But um, she's pretty much finished except painting, costuming, wigging, and um, because I'm doing fantasy, she's going to have wings. What I found is to make the best blush for the Genesis with the Genesis paints is to actually load up your brush. This is a little feathered uh, dry brush. Um, and then clean it all out on a rag. And then after it's set for a few hours, clean it out a little bit more on a rag. And it just leaves like um, a, a bit of dust in there. And it goes over the cheeks so much more evenly. I put a little across the bridge of the nose. I'm doing the blushing first. I have my hand in the way. <laughs> okay, a little bit underneath the chin, top of forehead. You can just barely see it, and that's the way it should be. You don't want a lot of heavy color on it. Okay, I got my basics in there first. <clears throat> and what I do is I mix a little bit of this pink and the taupe together, and I do little deeper areas right in here. Little nose holes. I used to paint a lot um, of color on my dolls, but I have really eliminated it now. I'm making them softer because now we have that new ProSculpt Light um, color, which is fairy-like or baby-like, and it doesn't need a lot of color. So, little fat folds in the neck. I use this particular taupe and pink mix uh, and it's on my website and all the body crevices like this. I put it on with a regular brush first and it has a little glazing medium in it. Then I take my dry brush and make sure there's nothing in this brush and feather it in to make it look natural. And the same thing underneath of um, little areas that you want to highlight. Just a light color and then always feather them in. It takes so little in the way of color. And here's the one I used on the blushing of the cheeks. I'm going to put a little bit in the 
center of the chest just a little bit to get the shadow the way I want it and then right where the uh, shoulder blade is indicated there's a little bit on both sides there's a little bit of a blush and on the shoulders I'm going to just do one side of the body because we don't have a lot of time here um, and then put some load up my brush again with a little bit of taupe and pink and I'm going to go down and do her little navel I got a little much color in there but I'll pull it out and what you do is once again put the color in feather it in just going to show you where you need to put these colors um, right here around the wrist and the actual uh, the fingertips are, are lighter and you're going to have some pink in between the fingers to accentuate them I make them look like they have a little more punch they stand out a little more you got it across the little dimples on the top of the hand and right across there and a whole lot of color at the very tips of the fingers because the tips of our fingers are a little bit pinker than the rest of it and I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to wipe it off and whatever's left gets feathered in we don't want one too much color just a, a suggestion of color okay and then um, on the fingers, what I'll do is I'll paint a little more pink, just right where the nail bed would be. And then when the doll's completely fired, now this, this is Genesis Paints, and it has to be fired for um, 250 for five minutes at that temperature. So you want to fire this paint on to make it permanent. And then um, after the nails, I mean the whole ha whole body's done, and you want to go back and fix the nails up, just put a little bit of that um, varnish. It's um, water soluble, and it's it's I think it's ceram coat. Yeah, ceram coat, Delta ceram coat. That's what it is. Varnish matte, and just beat it up, just a little drop on each one of those, and it, it makes a rounded nail bed. It's really cute. If you want to put that little white thing that they do there, you know, feel free, but Babies don't have very long fingernails, so be very careful. Okay, um, the whole body is like that, really. You just want to put a little bit of accents all over it, and the little nipple, little tiny thing. And it's too pink, but this is the same body fold color that I use. And I, I actually, when I sculpted it, I came to a little point where the little nipple is, right on the end. And the babies aren't going to be real round. They're going to be, see how much fat there is with this little, this little titty. It, it, it spreads out some. Um, the nipple is going to be spreading out to the sides too as opposed to a totally round like some pinup girl. Then you blot it and see how faint that is. And it looks real that way. That's a good look. Okay, we're going to go do her face. And let's see, I've got a little much underneath of her nose. First thing I want to do is pick out a color that I want to use for her eyes. And what do you think? Blue. <laughs> Blue is what we'll go for. All right. Yeah, really big eyes. So I'm going to leave a she's. It's like she's looking up. So I'm going to leave a little bit of what would be the white underneath of her eye showing. So I'm going to make a round iris, blue iris, pale, pale blue, with a little bit of white underneath. And white, I'm not painting it, I'm actually just leaving it um, the color of the um, actual clay. It's plenty light enough. If you're going to put um, white, you're doing it wrong. If you're going to put beige, that might work. but. It doesn't take much color, believe me. So now we want to 
outline this just a little bit. I'll put a little darker blue at the top. Take your time. <laughs> Not too awful. Put a little more blue, the light blue now, back in over top of it. And it'll thin up that dark blue line just a smidge more. Now I actually take um, a really deep purple or a really dark navy blue as opposed to black. Sometimes I mix all three of them together. I don't really care for black. I don't put it on anything. And I'm going to make the pupil in the center. Just dab it. Take your time. You want to try to get it as circular as you can. <clears throat> the reason I'm getting softer spoken is because I don't want to shake too much. I think I got it. It ain't perfect, but it ain't too bad either. Okay, take that color off your brush. You're not going to be using it for anything. And you want to take um, some dark burnt umber or really dark brown of some sort to your preference. <coughs> Oops. And you, when you put your paint in the paint, and put your brush in the paint, just roll it to a point. And something about this, these little bitty brushes, it uses all the paint off the very end first. And then you're left with, when you get to the corners, like hardly any paint at all. So that's perfect. So put the heavy concentration of paint right in the center. And it might be a little too dark for our blonde-headed baby. So I'm not going to go too far with this. I'm going to tone it down just a smidge uh, with a <clears throat> sort of a tan color. And I could take a little of the brown that's up there at the top and feather it with the beige, the tan, all the way down into the tear duct. It's cute. And go ahead and make some little tiny lashes with a lighter color. I blot everything just about. <clears throat> and another way is if it's too thick, and I think I got them just a little too thick considering how small a doll this is, you can take your pickup tool, your nail tool, and go back and thin out those lashes. Hey, that one's growing on us. Ugh, come back here. Hey, we got it. We tamed it. Uh, we're going to put a little eyebrow on it since I find the right brush again. And use your tan. Um, you don't want to commit to a dark color right off for an eyebrow. Because then it's really kind of hard to, you have to take the whole thing off. Sometimes it stains the surface of it. It's not good. So start with a tan color, okay? And just kind of rough it in where you might want it to be. And it's not a Hollywood mover star, so you're actually not going to be putting a big arch on it. You're going to round it out a little bit more. And I've got a little bit smidge off, so this thing is wonderful. It just picks up everything. Look at that. And uh, to make it perfect, like little strokes of eyelashes, or eyebrows, pardon me, a hair each time, you take the tool and you feather the way the brow grows. Okay. And if you want darker color in it, you could put a little bit darker right through the front. I'll just put a teeny bit to show you how to do that. But she's going to be a blonde, so I like the light color as it is. Just a little bit. 
if it'll come up out of the brush. <laughs> it's in there, I know it isn't. I just put it in there. Oh well. You just get a couple of lines of you gotta get the tip of the brush just perfect. Here we go. Just a little bit darker. Do not let your eyebrows come too close to the center. If you take an invisible line and you're making it from the side of the nose, just curve around the eye. Somewhere in that vicinity, this little C curve is where it starts. It doesn't start straight up the nose and then go that way. It's just a round curve. Everything on the body is curved. I'm going to put a tiny little bit of, I hope you're able to see this, um, little tiny lashes underneath and all you do to do that is a lot like china painting. You make some little dots first. Little tiny dots. And then if you're careful you can feather those little dots out towards the side and make little tiny bottom lashes. It's really difficult to see on this but um, they're there. Okay, mouth and um, like on the interior of the ears and um, the toes, it, it's a lot like the body folds. Everything's done in that pink. We're not going to show you every little thing. So um, I've got the mouth yet, and that will be all we'll do for the painting. And then we get on to the fun part, which is making the wig and putting her wing and costume on. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of kind of a, a rusty, rosy color and put on the interior of her lips. Now this is where you only, this is the only place you put the heavy dark colors. Except for a little bit on the top lip to accentuate the top line. Okay, and let's see if I can find a place to put my hand so it's not in the way. Beady, beady bit. Babies, you want to keep really soft colors. Okay, there's this little divot hanging on the mouth, and we want to make it look like it's bigger than it is, so we'll take some color, and we'll pull it from the center of the mouth up to the sides of that little divot, and accentuate that. Then we're going to get rid of this dark red rosy color and we're going to put some baby pink in there and it wouldn't hurt if you had a little tan even. Okay, you start with the main color on the bottom lip. This is a cute little baby. My goodness. Surprised even me. Spent a lot of time trying to get this thing together. Oh baby. See, I'm not putting a whole lot of color in that thing in the center. I'd leave that just a little bit lighter. Okay. All right. We're really close. Got the little bit of the red that's in the mouth and the center line just out just a little bit, but you don't want to take it too far out on the corners. Doesn't look real natural. Just a little bit. And pull some down towards the center. Make pouty lips. Not pulling very easy, but this is a cute little face. I think the nose holes could use a little more uh, depth to them. So while you've got that pretty color that's on the surface of the bottom lip, just stick it right inside the little nose hole. See how that accentuated them a little bit more? That's the color that you need. Looks really natural. Okay, um, just a little bit more. We're not going to do tons because I don't color them up like I used to. We're going to put a little bit right here. You know, you have a tear duct to deal with. And I'm going to feather that in in just about a minute. Since I cleaned up a little mess I made, I can see. Ew. What was I doing there? Okay. 
um, yeah, take a real soft little dry brush and feather that in so that you end up with a little, see that, see where the little um, area right here where it's depressed right around the bottom of the eye socket. Um, that's what we're trying to accentuate now. And also, since I find the right color, here it is. Okay, I'm going to go on the sides of the nose and I'm going to put a little bit of pink in there. And even the top of the nose, just a little tiny bit. And I'm going to take my dry brush once again and feather that in. See, I found just recently, not until just recently, that it's better to put the cheek color in first and then go back and do this because you, after you get all of this perfect, if you don't get the cheek color in, oh, uh, you can mess up everything that you've done. So, you know, watch what you're doing there. Okay, um, she could use a little bit more color under the fat folds of her neck. I like that. Looks like a lot, but eh, when you feather it in, it won't be. It'll be just right. And you just take your time and play around with it. And next time you see this little sweetie, she'll have her face painted. So she's going to go in the oven at 250 for five minutes at that temperature to fire her. And that's it. Okay. First thing you want to do on the finished stages of the doll is you want to carve out the back of the, the back where the uh, wing slot is going to be. And there is wire on these little wings. And I'm going to roll that piece of wire up and use liquid nails and stick it down inside of it. So uh, make sure this is done first before you get the costume on her and really mess it up. So enough of that. First thing we're going to do, second thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little costume on her. So we want to, um, here it is, here's her little panties. We're going to put a little glue on the underneath side here. We're going to make a quick costume. But I've been known to use these things on my dolls. Just as uncomplicated as it possibly gets. Mm. We're making panties. So it's a three petal flower that just made a pair of panties on her. Kind of hard to see, but. And we're going to let it dry for a little bit. So we need a few more petals out the back side just for aesthetics. I have to cut this up while we're doing it because I'm holding the. I use uh, Faber Tac. Um, glue because it is really easy to get off the doll if you ever want to. I'll put it right down there. It's kind of a mess, but it's the easiest thing to work with, believe it or not, and it dries really fast. So we're just going to give her a little tutu out the back side. Something that just about touches the ground, but not quite. Shift it around a little bit more on that side. Tack this down here. Poor cameraman, trying to keep up with this operation. That's a tricky one. <laughs> and I'm going to put a little... It doesn't have to be fancy because what we're going to do is we're going to put a little um, layer of really sweet um, chiffon petals over the top of it. And they will really make it cute. Don't have to hold it down long. This stuff sticks pretty quick. Put another big one right here. It's a big one. Yeah. Mr. Cameraman, how you doing? <laughs> Try to keep up. <laughs> We have 10 minutes left on this film, <laughs> and I'm 
going like the wind. <laughs> okay, that's cute. I put a little something in the front to cover that situation. All that work we did, it's not even going to hardly show. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. You know it's there. I don't want to put a lot of tutu in the front because uh, it'll make her look dwarfed funny. Like um, her legs too close or her belly too close to the ground or something. And you won't even see the detail at all with the legs. So we're just going to keep it real simple in the front. Just like that. Okay, now we want to, I'll show you how to make a wig real fast. Um, this is Tibetan lamb. I have dyed it with um, a L'Oreal color, some kind of carrot red or something. I'm not sure what that was. But all you have to do, um, and I've actually didn't dye this color. Uh, I dyed yellow first, then I did a L'Oreal color over top of it. But um, I just barely put it on here for a few minutes and washed this part out. So I ended up with two tones. So, which is really great for highlights. So, in order to make a wig, what we do is you want to cut it right off the hide. You just get a little piece that you want and you just put it like that. And that is all there is to that. Now, you want to even out the ends because they're really going to be all over the place. Like so. And then you're going to put your glue on the end. Well, this isn't the exact color that I'm going to choose. I've, I've got a little piece already ready to go that's going to have um, a little more yellow in it. Here it is. This is the one I really want. And heaven knows how this is going to come out. I'm going to put a little bit of this on the back side of it. And so you're going to try to get the edges all even before you start gluing. And because she's a baby, I don't want really long hair on her. So what I'm going to do she's going to end up looking like a woody woodpecker and if you've seen my other films you know the process here but so I'm going to figure out where it's going to fall so if all of this is glued together at this end and I want a little bit of hair sticking out on the ends I know that I've got to cut off a little bit by the time it's all glued around the face and everything um, I'm going to have to cut off a little bit of this to make it shorter because what's left of this has to go down on the interior of her head. And that reminds me, once again, folks, turn around sideways. You want to cut your wire out, which is simple as that. Who knows when that went. Okay, here she is. And I'm going to glue this after I cut it. Uh, I'll go ahead and do it up here so you can see what I'm doing. It's just like the butt of a cigarette. It's all been cut off to be level and so now you are assured of having all the pieces together boy this this operation makes a big mess in your studio I can see it all over the dining room tables of every woman that's done this <laughs> now and her husband comes home and says honey what's all this fur on the table and on the floor and <laughs> all over my black pants when I sat down on the dining room chair Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> I've done it. So you just really get it in there. And I'm hoping it's not too long on her still. But, see, I try to get all I can with the glue so it's sticking together. Because when I go to comb it out a little bit, um, it's going to pull a lot of it out that, it, that isn't stuck together. So I let it dry for just a second. Tap it down. Ooh, it gets everywhere. Okay, and as this is drying, um, and there's so much on it, you can start putting it, to push it together like so to compress it some. But it does take a few minutes. So while we're letting that dry, we're going to put the wings on. What you do is you take a little bit of this is uh, liquid nails small projects and you take the glue let's turn the dolly around here this is really a messy operation and you put a little glob on it first 
It's quite easy. And after this is all in there, whoa, whoa, maybe I won't get it in there. Yes, I got it. Okay. After it's all in there, you want to um, roll your wire up like so. So you get, um, if you want to buy these, um, they're real cicada wings, all right? Uh, we will have them on our website soon. So I don't, I'm not sure how much they're going to be because um, we have to actually take the wings off of a real bug that comes from Africa. And it's kind of a nasty job, but you want to put it just down in there. And after it's all dry and everything, then you can, it's got wire on it. We'll put wire on them and you can lift it up and you can pose it like so. Okay, we've squashed this down pretty good now. Let's see what we've got. Oh yeah. Nice little crop of hair. And you're going to want to pull some of it out. And it's going to be messy and it's going to be all over and you're going to use um, mousse like you use on your own hair to tame it. And I'm going to put a little more glue right down in the center. Ooh. Sticky, messy stuff, but not tons, okay? Just, and then you want to put some all the way around the outside edge, not a whole lot in the front, all right? Just a little bit over the top of the ears, and you're going to have to work fast because this stuff is going to set up really quick. A little bit down the sides. Okay, in goes the hair. Squash it down quite a bit. Ooh, Woody Woodpecker, here we go. Okay. So you want to give her some little bitty bangs. And if it's not enough, you can always add some more glue and tap it down some more. Make sure it's all down there just perfect each and every time. And I know her hair's a little bit long for a baby, but Hey, this is my baby, and I'm going to do it that way. <laughs> and you can do what you want to, too. And then, at the last of it, what you could do is make a cute little wreath across the top of her hair to hold her hair down. Um, pin it all together, little bitty flowers, so that she has a, um, a headband across the top. Or, if you don't care for that, you can turn a flower upside down and give her that kind of look. There's all kinds of things. So next scene will be a finished baby and um, that's the end of this tape ladies and gentlemen and I do hope you'll come back and see some more because we're going to do ladies and we're going to do all kinds of creatures over the next few years. So this is my baby. Thanks a lot for viewing it.